Hey there, it's Justin from Davis 3D. I thought I'd uh, record a video of me fixing up a model that I received from an employee, a freelancer, just in regards to uh, sculpting techniques and also learning about how to design creatures properly according to their form and function. So this is what I've received. It's certainly not a bad model at all. Um, it could definitely use a bit of work though. And upon seeing it, I was actually pretty impressed, but the the few things that I, I want to go over, I'll highlight just now. So first of all, I did a, a redesign of the face. Uh, let's zoom in on that. The, the first thing I noticed in the design was when I tried closing the mouth on the original one, it didn't actually uh, close properly. Like I'll show you here if I just grab this one and do a rotate. So it only goes to about there. So it's still stuck open. So I redesigned the shape of the mouth and I used an orca as a reference. Uh, most ocean animals, the, uh, the shape of the mouth goes down and then up rather than up and up and then down. So I've uh, done a few modifications here. Second thing you might notice with ocean animals is the positioning of the eye is further back, closer to the, the, the end of the jaw. Now I understand the, um, the Elasmosaurus, which is the reference for this animal, um, had its eye a little bit further forward, but I'm not exactly sure it was that far forward. You can see it here, it's still fairly further back and that actually provides better design for the animal simply because in real life uh, no animals really have their eyes forward and you can get away with it with some stylized animals but in this case I think we want to go for as realistic as possible so we'll just move that eye further back I think the, the jaw probably doesn't need to go so far back either To fit in with the, the theme of Avatar, I think we should probably chuck in two eyes. And also the brain would be around this area, so we don't really want that thinned out. We want that kind of enlarged. So the key to designing good animals or good creatures is dealing with uh, ideas or, or concepts that sort of fit within reality and stretch it a bit but don't stretch it too far to the point where it doesn't make any sense uh, anatomically speaking so um, another major fl uh, point that I want to fix here is this animal would often probably be seen on its belly underwater if it's resting so it wouldn't really have fins underneath it unless it was constantly swimming and some animals do constantly swim, but most don't. Most, um, you know, rest. Even fish rest in caves sometimes when they want to sleep. Uh, so we'll just get rid of that fin there. And we might even uh, be able to put that on the, the top of the animal instead of the bottom. So I'm just going to do a few adjustments with the, uh, the overall form of the animal. Let's turn off dynamic. There we go just so it fits more in line with its own body. I try to keep everything in line because when it comes to rigging it's so much easier to deal with. Generally, I don't really try to do um, multiple meshes for the same creature. I do understand you can merge them at a later time, but sometimes you come up with... You run into some pretty annoying merging issues. So I'd prefer it if it's just one main mesh. And if you want to modify the base form, you generally just use um, Zed Remesher or something like that. Um, 
because the, the detail doesn't need to be super high. We don't need to go over 20 million. This one's um, even just 10 million. And the head's probably around 1 million. So yeah, 11 million is nowhere near high enough to justify having two meshes. Now um, we'll focus in on the head again. We'll grab the move tool. Oh, I've already been using the move tool. All right, um, let's fix up that jaw again. It's a bit bumpy. So we'll just smooth it out a bit. Earlier what I did was I actually grabbed a mask um, and I, I chucked on some UV coordinates for this model so I can store a texture file. So in the texture map, if you turn the texture on, it's actually got the mask. So then if you go to masking, you can mask by intensity. Turn off the texture and suddenly you've got your jaw mask again, so you can open the jaw. So the first thing you notice is when you open it, um, this area around the throat kind of goes inwards. So I think it's probably a good idea to make the throat outwards, not inwards. Again, um, like real animals generally have a, a large throat area like whales. Um, in fact, let's, let's get a, up some examples. So you see the throat area on this is actually further out. That kind of fixes the issue that we run into. So we'll just use a clay build up to build up the throat area. And the jaw muscles should probably start around here. Now it, it can go further in around the, the front of the jaw. Like if you feel your own jaw, um, the further back you go, the further the bulge is. The rest of the neck, I think we should probably only modify after we've merged it with the original mesh. Um, the blowholes are a nice touch. I reckon um, they'd probably be a little bit higher, maybe. So all these decisions I'm making are basically just thoughts about how an animal would would really need to, to have its body if, if I was designing a body for an animal and I wanted it to have its best chance of survival. I'm thinking about what I would give it and where I would put it. So a blowhole would be further up um, so that it would be easier to um, breathe, I guess. But I guess that depends on the decision of whether this animal is going to be permanently underwater or whether it would actually breathe like a dolphin. I'm just making a little bit more streamlined with the shape. So that curve goes all the way around. <laughs> all right, let's uh, bring it up slightly. Smooth out the front a bit.
I'll move the eye into position. nice if, if you want to humanize a model make it more cute or more friendly it's always good to give them eyelids just to make them have some kind of emotion that they can convey to the the viewer if you make the bottom eyelids squint a bit it actually makes them look kind of playful We're going to retopologize this later, so I'm not caring too much about the actual topology. Sorry, I just had to let my dog outside. It's being annoying. Alright, because the topology is a bit low, I might actually have to divide it again. Hmm. We're getting a bit of a weird topology going on here, so I'm just going to wipe out that entire thing and do it again. Maybe even use an inflate this time. Just to get smoother topology.
That's a bit better. Now, I use the clay build up clay uh, build up brush for basically every kind of muscle strand and I just use my pen to lightly build up the muscle strands because the clay build up brush does a nice job of both smoothing and building up at the same time you'll notice like if there's a, a, a dip here and I use the clay build up it tends to make a nice smooth uh, uh, I don't even know what to call it it's smooth um, filling I guess rather than like let's say use the standard brush it doesn't really smooth it at all it kind of just makes it all lumpy and gross there we go so that's looking a lot better now um, in regards to this little mouth lip flap area um, Let's open the mouth again and have a look at that because lip flaps are generally, they start at the point where the mouth actually opens and go further out to that point rather than starting further back. If they start further back and then you open the mouth, you're not going to stretch them at all. It's going to look kind of weird. So let's go back to here. Let's mask by intensity. Turn off texture map. Now the, um, the jawbone is about here. Now you can see when you, you rotate it, the throat doesn't have the same problem it did before. In fact, um, we could probably even smooth that a, a bit more and then rotate it. So now that it's at that point, I think we can just leave the mouth open because we know that it matches um, the correct curve. Let's take a look inside the mouth. Yeah, so the inside needs a bit of work. It's mostly just the back area where the throat hole is. Needs to be pushed further back. It's very hard to model in here though, so I'm going to just hide a, a whole bunch of the model. That's a bit easier. I think I need to figure out how to get a better light. Let's get um, standard basic material. There we go. Now if I change the light, it should uh, adjust. In fact, uh, let's add another one. Now, um, a great animal to look at for the back of the throat is an alligator or a hippo. If you watch videos of them, um, one second, gotta close Chrome because it got stuck. Um, an alligator throat or a crocodile throat. They have this a weird skin flap. When their mouth is closed, it it's almost like seamless. That's like a, a great little hack to do for cro creatures because you don't really have to want to have to uh, model inside the throat. It's a lot better to just, you know, make a little seam here that looks a bit like an alligator. And it's a good reference to copy, basically. Um, alligator mouth. 
Another good uh, reference for the inside of an aquatic animal is um, orca mouth. They have the same thing. Obviously, they don't want to swallow water all the time. So, uh, let's find a good... Good reference point. That's probably a good reference, even though it's not real. It's a model of reality. They got a tongue as well. Um, so, I, I, you can model the tongue at the bottom, because it won't move, uh, or you can, you know, just ignore it entirely. Tongue wouldn't hurt. I think uh, I'll just use the mask pen for a tongue. Inflate tool's good for adding quick volume. I use the inflate tool because it pushes out on all sides, not just vertically. So when you add it to the sides of the tongue, it kind of creates that crease as if it's a separate model, but it's not. And then you can come in with the um, clay brush tool again. And just add some definition. So there were some teeth, I might try and move them into place, but if they don't fit, we can always just redo them. Yeah, they're definitely not going to fit, <laughs> it's probably easier. Um, in fact, sometimes it's better to just create uh, one, or, one, two or three teeth, uh, because then when you go to convert them to low poly, you can put them into position after you've already converted the whole thing to low poly. Um, for the sake of appearances, though, let's put these roughly into position. Uh, looks like I've offset it a bit. I had to put symmetry on. Oh, I thought symmetry was on. It still wasn't on. Symmetry on. There we go. get a rough idea of what it might look like once we do the final version. Not bad. I 
All right. Might give it a save. Okay, so it's important to note that I'm, even though I'm not finished with the head, I'm going to go back to the body just so I can take a break. Because the longer you take a break, uh, the more your brain can refresh and see what you didn't see before and be able to improve it a bit better. So, um, going over the body, the first thing I know is, is this little line along the neck. The neck is um, quite bumpy and uneven. So I would prefer to just do the finer details later. So we'll just smooth that all out and do it when we're finished. That way we can avoid any bumpiness that occurs by doing any movements. I'm going to change the music so it's less lyrics. All right. Um, same goes for these. These are cool ideas. Definitely want to keep them, but I feel like we should add these finer details after the main design has been solidified and confirmed. So quite fat on the body. When I first saw this, I actually thought it was upside down and this was the uh, fat cavity of um, a creature and, and this was the mouth, uh, which actually could have worked really well. But since it's more of a, a sea dragon type, I think we need to even it out a little bit. So I'm going to pull that up. Align it all. I might even just do a clip, hide the all the fins. Just so I can have a proper look here. Yeah, so it's not exactly streamlined. Um, what's going to happen if I move that? Yeah, see that's going to happen. So I um, might just have to mask it all. this up and straighten it out. Make sure it's completely flat. Oh, sorry, my mic was off. I hope you could hear me. Um, I'll repeat what I said. So, uh, you notice how the bone stru structure along the front main fin kind of blends up towards the spine, but it, it matches around the middle point. It's not all the way up at the top. It's at the middle point. So, if we open up this design again, I've just made it at the middle point but now what we need to do is blend it back up to where the spine is. So we'll switch to gray.
Now, um, another thing you could notice is in this reference, the, um, gee, why isn't that dragging down? There we go. So in this reference, you notice the, the neck kind of comes up and then forward, uh, up and then down, should I say. So this curve of the spine needs to go down where the front two small fins are, and then up and then down again. So it's like a big S. Uh, this, the position of the spine should essentially lead the rest of the form of the body. So I'm going to try to do that now and just see how much better it looks. And now I, I know that I said earlier that making it flat is good for rigging, but adding some bend to it isn't actually that big of a deal. It just, it shouldn't be to the point where it's going to cause issues. So let's make this further down. looking much better already. I'll just save and then we'll compare before just to see how much of a difference that made. So look at that, huge difference. And we can even compare it to the old one. Uh, there we go. So it's already looking a lot less lumpy, a lot more streamlined. Um, we could probably move the head. Rotate it along with the spine so it looks proper. And yes, this will probably get rid of where the eye positions are, but we won't really care about that for now. We can all do that stuff later. Now, in the reference photo, um, the base of the neck is thicker than the end of the neck. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that now as well. I'll use the inflate tool, um, set it to a very low value, and then just add the adjustment. There we go. that out. It's looking a lot more similar now. Similar but different. Exactly what we need. So um, the crease where this, um, this back fin kind of joins in with the body, I feel like it, it's okay, but I feel like it's probably not resembling any other animals that we see in real life. 
Like, I guess if you go to seals or orcas or any of those animals, they're kind of made of rubber. Like, they have very rubbery, thick skin, so creases don't really occur in, in those types of animals. So I'm just going to smooth it out a bit and um, make some adjustments with the, the muscle groups. I'm using the reverse inflate, uh, just the inflate tool with alt held down to thin out the edges. If it starts to overlap, you can just smooth it. Seems like the topology around this end piece is going to be a problem if I do that, so I'm just going to undo all of what I did. And we're just going to avoid that end piece, make that a bit thicker, maybe. Sharp to topology points are generally to be avoided. I don't like them because they reduce the control of models. Uh, the, sorry, they reduce the, the control of what I'm trying to model. Um, my brain's a bit fried today. I've had not too much sleep. But uh, not a problem. Everywhere else. So something else I've noticed is the, the the anatomy of this creature. The bones of the top flippers are essentially like wings, so they connect to the spine up here. So if they'd connect to the spine, then they'd probably bend down a bit and then flow out. So I'm going to raise them up a little bit and make them bend down. bit more like an aeroplane, I guess. And they probably shouldn't be too thick underneath. So I'll just reduce the thickness over here. Looking much better. Uh, 
Um, I'm not really sure what these pieces would serve for the animal. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure if they should belong or not. So often what I can do is just save and then get rid of them and see how they look. So we'll just mask this and do a scale. Not sure what's going on there. There we go. So it's before and after. I think it probably looks, looks better after. You could probably get away with small ones, just not as not as big. Now, I I guess the reason why I'm I'm thinking this way is because I don't know when they're pointing out. I could only think of them being in the way of the the rear flippers trying to move. I don't see them actually making the the swimming better for the animal. I only see them kind of making the swimming worse. So we'll just go forward, smooth that out, and. I don't know. Let's see what we can do. Now, if you feel on your own spine, there's parts where the spine kind of bends inwards and parts where the spine kind of sticks out, like um, around the neck or the upper back. And that's usually the part that's the most flexible. So the tail is probably the most flexible part. So we're going to make the spine kind of stick out. And um, you can kind of see that in the reference as well. If you look at the, the tail, it doesn't have that indent the same way it does at the middle of the body. Same with where the neck is, it sticks out, not in. That's because it's the most flexible part. Now the bottom's where the most of the muscle would be, I'd, I'd say. Kind of like where the chest is on, the, on a human. Um, sometimes it's good to go to... Uh, Bing images or uh, Google images to see the anatomy of, you know, certain ocean animals just to see where they, their muscles go. And you can essentially just copy them. Orca muscle anatomy. Belly. Not sure they would have anything underneath. Um, 
sometimes if you need a specific view, you can go to uh, 3D Orca Anatomy. Because if you get a 3D model, um, you can rotate it around and have a look. 3D Whale Muscle Anatomy. CG Trader might have some. Nope. Alright, we're gonna have to just look at some of the side profiles and wing it, I suppose. This is probably the better one. And that is how you get the nice little bumps that look like there's actual muscle underneath. And you try to put them in the correct places based on real world animals and it makes it look a lot more convincing. So I'll continue around the tail again.
I'm just adding a little bit of fat wrinkles around the edges where there would naturally be a bit of creasing. We can do the same on the top. Again, I'm still looking at the reference to this animal. So it kind of like goes along here from underneath the front arm. Find a different reference. Let's go plesiosaur anatomy. That's probably going to give some better results. I'm not sure that's exactly accurate because they're kind of making it up, but surely there's a good one. Anyway, with, let's just go with this and see how it looks. It's the cheat codes to making good uh, muscle anatomy. Just literally copy. Looks like we accidentally made a dimple here. Let's fix it up. save and compare. Anatomically correct, better anatomy, um, 
form before function. Oh, sorry, function before form. <laughs> Gonna make sure that that belly has useful function uh, so it doesn't hurt itself. Um, I should probably add these little holes. So I'm guessing these holes are probably more like gills, something that'll help it along. So the water would be going in this way. So the shape of the gills should really start here and have this nice little edge along it and stick out. That way the, the water can flow inwards. The, um, the birds, the uh, dragons from Avatar had the same thing. And um, there's also had this nice little groove. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was the same groove they stuck their feet into. I mean, the main characters, not the birds. Hmm. I don't actually think the placement of these is correct. I think um, it would make more sense for them to go down here. Just because this is where the muscle is, alongside the neck, the sides of the necks are the most important part. Um, under here, you have a nice little gap of muscle, right, right here. So if I were to put the holes somewhere, it'd probably be where the gap of the muscle is, not where the center of the muscle is. So, I'm just going to get rid of all of this. In fact, let's just undo, go through the undo process. Do a quick inflate. Probably too big, but I mean, it was good for a test. We'll make them smaller.
just making that indent where the muscle was missing a bit more apparent. Just so, um, oh gee, move tool spazzing out. Just so it's a bit more apparent that 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 is actually anatomically correct and not intersecting where the muscles are. So let's just compare with the old one, new one. And like we talked about with the spine earlier, the spine is uh, protruding from the top of the neck around the parts that are the most flexible. The bottom of the neck's okay, but that's more like a tendon rather than an actual bone, so it's good that it's thin. That's um, a good way to do it. The top should be thicker. One final do over with the move tool to adjust any form corrections that need to take place, like this little bump here. Just making it as aerodynamic as possible.
Alright, looking pretty good. Now, we can come back to the head because it's been a while. I'll just save this one more time. Alright, coming back to the head. We should move the eyes back into place. When I'm moving them back into place, I'm actually putting the center of the eye where I'd expect the actual, um, I guess the center of the eye to be, <laughs> um, in the middle of the eyelid. That way, when it comes to adjusting the eyelid, um, I can pull it out where it needs to be pulled out rather than run into rigging issues or animation issues later. Because the side profile remains the same, but the 3D profile needs to come out. Gee, this dynamic brush size thing is really annoying. Because every time I change it, <laughs> it changes, um, like, it's really small here, and then it's really big here. It's probably because perspective's on. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Uh, let's go back to here. Yeah, about that big. So, um, we can try an anatomy trick. With a lot of ocean animals, they all tend to have some kind of sonar ability. And for that, they have to have this fat cavity stored somewhere. Usually on the front of their head somewhere. Um, either on the top of their head, or, you know, right at the front. In the case of the uh, reference example, James Cameron's designers have actually put it at the very front, in front of the eyes. That's why there's this big bulge. But, um... You know, we could try it there, we could see how it looks, give it a go. It's probably easier if we do it on using the inflate tool. Just inflate the front part. Yeah, not bad. Doesn't look too bad at all. Looks a bit weird from the top though. Let's try and move it in.
So that's what it looked like before. This is what it looks like after. I'm not entirely sure I like it. I mean, I feel like it does make it look more anatomically accurate, but I'm not so sure about the positioning. It looks less like a bird, more like an ocean animal. I do think the jaw needs to be bigger though. I'm just basically playing around different different forms, different shapes.
Let's try a new mouth shape. Just mask the eyes. That looks a bit better. A bit more like a snake, I guess. Let's, uh, let's get some snake anatomy in this house. Hmm. So it goes down, up, down, up. I guess that's a bit more like fish too, if you look at a fish mouth. Down, up. Regarding the eyes, I think the, f the small eyes should look to the front and the large eyes should look to the side, so let's just move the front eyes. A bit more in.
All right, I think we're done for the, you know, the basic form now. The rest would just be details and wrinkles, and obviously retopology and, and merging the head together. Um, what was I going to do before that? I was going to smooth it all over. Just make sure there's no little errors. Gonna check the um double uh merge down the eyes together, I guess. Um or maybe I just mirror them. There you have it. One more time, we'll just compare the before and after. So that's the before. This is the after. And I forgot to smooth a little spot here. 